Hello. So today what I want to do is talk to you about using these little Bluetooth modules and hooking them into your Arduino or Arduino compatible device. In this case I'll be using a Teensy 3.2 and a Patent Robotics motherboard. But it should work with basically any of the Arduino uh, product lines. Um, these guys are pretty easy to use. There's only four wires you have to deal with. The receive, the transmit, the ground, and the voltage supply. They have a nice wide range of supply voltages everywhere from 3.6 to 6 volts, so you should be able to run them without too much trouble. Um, <clears throat> you can wire them up a couple of different ways, and you can control them a couple of different ways. So in this next couple of videos, I'm going to be dealing with writing a piece of software that has a, uh, a free app for a PC, and then I'll show you one on an Android device, so you can control it with either one. Um, wiring them. <clears throat> you can either just wire them directly like I've done in this particular case. In this case you can see the the blue and the brown wires are going on down to the transmit and receive of this TNC 3.2 and I've got the white and the black wires here that are going up to power and ground with the uh, black wire on the outermost set of pins being ground, the white wire being power. Um, the easiest way probably to hook them up is with some sort of little adapter board like this. This particular guy just spans across to the uh, transmit and receive. Okay, so it slots in here like this. And of course it has power and ground. And then this guy just plugs in like this. And you're ready to go. Okay, so once you actually have it hooked up and powered up and it's flashing its light, it's waiting to handshake with your Bluetooth controller. And like I said, in this case, I'm going to be using my PC. If you haven't, this if, if this is the first time, what you need to do is go to your settings, go to Bluetooth, find the Bluetooth here, and you should see an unknown object if it's the first time pop up here. You're going to want to click on that to handshake with it. Um, every one of these things that I've played with has had a, a basic code of 1, 2, 3, 4, Although I have, I shouldn't say everyone, I have had a 0, 0, 0, 0 in the past. But I think most everything is just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Once it pairs, it'll remember, so you won't have to enter that code in again. Like this one, I don't have to because it knows what I've done it already. And then we need a piece of software that's going to communicate with it. In this case, I just went to the App Store and I found a free piece of software that I thought I'd play with which is this blue Duino. And let me get this over here on this screen. And once you have the blue Duino, then you have to go ahead, Duino, I should say, and connect with the device. Okay, so now I'm connected. And before I do any coding, I want to show you something about this, this particular software. It's unique to this software. What I wanted to do is I wanted to find um, something that I can uh, show you several examples with. And this is kind of important. This, this software has a really cool feature called the, the joystick, which allows you to control an X, Y, uh, uh, well, joystick. And I can use it to steer a robot or whatever else I want to do with it. And it sends out a format like this. Okay, so the, the first character it sends is going to be a star. Then it sends the value of the, y, of the X, I'm sorry, a comma, a value of the Y, and then a pound sign. Okay, the terminating character is a pound sign. I'm actually going to write a couple of apps, or a couple of sketches, I'm sorry, that are going to be looking for this pound sign as a terminating character. I'm doing it only because this is a piece of software that I'm playing with. Some software, like the one that I'll show you on the uh, Android device, uh, it allows you to choose the terminating character. Okay, but in this particular case, they've, they've decided they're going to use a pound, so I'm just going to go with that for everything that I uh, demo with you right now. So let me get this out of here, and let's look at a piece of code. Okay, and I'll be posting this code so you'll be able to see it. Um, oh, actually, I want to show you a different one first, so sorry. Okay. So on the code that I post, you'll see that I do have the wiring diagram up here. This is going to be the Bluetooth device, and this is going to be, in this case, the Teensy, but I'm sure it'll work with 
even an old uh, AVR device like just a classic Arduino and you need to find the the corresponding pins okay um, first thing I'm going to do is I need to take advantage of the onboard serial and I'm going to create an object I just called it blue serial and then I need to create a couple of variables uh, that I'm going to use my out string is kind of my final string when everything is done uh, that's where my complete string is going to go that I can print out to the screen. The temp string is going to be where I build the string, where I take characters and add them onto it and add them onto it until I, I get a full string until the terminating character. Then, of course, the, <coughs> the character as it comes off the serial port, I'm going to temporarily store into the in character variable. Setup, uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch the serial window here because we're going to see it uh, as the computer communicates to the Bluetooth and then the Bluetooth talks to the Arduino and the Arduino spits it back to the computer so we're going to see circular data flow here. I'm going to make it wait until I open up the serial window before it proceeds past this point. I then open up the uh, Bluetooth serial communication to 9600 uh, in good measure, I make it spit out ready uh, into my uh, serial window so I can see that everything's set. And then I throw in an extra half a second just because I'm not in a rush. Uh, the loop, super simple. The only thing it's going to do is call the get blue serial. Okay, so this is going to call the command, the function that's actually going to gather the data off the uh, Bluetooth device. It's not long. Okay, so it's a pretty quick little piece of code. First thing I do is create a while loop that if there's nothing in the buffer, let's just hang out here and constantly check. Okay, so it's a just waiting and waiting and waiting, making sure that uh, until there's something in the buffer. If there is something in the buffer, all right, we've now reached that point. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and collect that first character and put it into the variable if char in character. Now, I'm always looking for that terminating character, okay, the pound sign. Well, if it's the first one, more than likely it's not going to be the terminating character, so it's going to skip all this, and then it's going to take that <coughs> terminating character, I'm sorry, the in character, and add it to my temp string, which initially was set to an empty string, okay, so now we have that first character in there. Loops back up again, takes in the next character, checks it to see if it's a terminating character, adds it if it isn't. Eventually, we get to the terminating character, which is here. It then sets the, the temp string, which we've been building, and I set it to the out string so I can do something with it outside of this function. I then go ahead and roll that terminating character into the in character, okay? And then I clear out the, t the temp string and just set it to an empty string. And then for this particular demonstration, I'm simply going to display it out here. All right. So let me go ahead and get this going. And I'm going to pause it while it compiles. And I'll see you in a second. Okay, it's compiled. And I've opened up the, uh, the serial window. And I've moved this blue Duino over here. And what I did is I actually went and called up the terminal, which allows me to just send any sort of string that I want. And I've already tested it with one piece of string here, which is just this one, two, three, four. And I hit send, and of course you can see that it actually grabs it and puts it into place. And I can make it basically anything I want. I can put in a whole bunch of gibberish and hit send. And of course it'll go ahead and capture the gibberish and print it out. So this was pretty straightforward. It is capable of doing, you know, any sequence of numbers and whatever you want and it captures it just fine and displays it okay so i want to show you this um before we move on but i want to show you this joystick it's pretty cool all right and if i move this joystick around you can see that it's clearly sending out data but it's kind of hard to understand all right well that's because it's sending it out in the uh the ascii variable or ascii format all right this each one of these characters is actually coming through as an ascii value and this thing is interpreting it as an actual uh character or some uh, a letter all right and for a refresher here if you look you can see that 
what we're looking at is the decimal value of these characters. So it's sending this number, but we're seeing these num these things displayed on our screen. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to capture this this uh, flow of data, and then look at these individual characters and then convert these into bytes or integers so we can do something with it, like uh, control servo speed. So let me pull up another piece of code and I'll talk you through that. Hold on one second. Okay, so this piece of code is gonna chunk that data a little bit further so we can make sense of these, these uh, unusual characters here and take advantage of the comma and the star to be able to chop the data flow up. To do that, I did decide to change the variables a little bit. I still have my get character and my temp string, but then I broke my uh, out string into two different ones because uh, I'm looking at the x and the y. So I made two different variables to store the x and the y. I also made two variables to store the characters that roll off. And then, of course, I've created two variables here to hold the byte that is going to be the numeric equivalent of the data flow. Okay. This remains the same. I'm just opening up the the ports, uh, setting them up. The loop starts off with going ahead and just getting that uh, data off the Bluetooth. Comes down here, does the same thing here, waits until there's uh, no data in the port. And then if uh, what it does is if, it's, if there is in fact data, <coughs> it gets the first character. Once again, and we can kind of ignore this little bit right here because the first character if it's not a comma or a pound, the terminating character, well, then it's just going to add it to the temp string. Okay. Eventually, what happens is it reaches that comma. Okay. And when it does that, it sets the temp string equal to the x value because this is going to be x. It then rolls the comma in here to and adds it to the temp string and then clears the temp string. But this is an important point. I don't actually clear the character. All right. And since this structure is written in such a way that it's if, if, and then if else, okay, um, we have to consider that the get character is still holding the comma as it proceeds down the line. All right. So that comma ultimately, because this else is a function of this, gets added on to this temp string, comes back up, and we still have the comma. All right. Now it's going to go ahead and add and add remaining bits of characters after the comma until we get to the terminating string. At this point, it's going to go ahead and uh, uh, chunk off the, the, the uh, pound sign. I'm sorry, I stalled there for a second. Clear the temp string, and now we have a value for y string. Okay, so we now have both of these values in here. Now jump up here. Remember, we still have that comma. That comma was carried through because we didn't purge the uh, character buffer, the character variable. And so what I want to do now is I want to get rid of those two little bits of, uh, of uh, information. I want to go ahead and get rid of the star, which is the preceding thing, so that x string still has the star on it. That was the first character. So that's going to be the zero position. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it off, get rid of it. Then I'm going to go ahead and take that X string, and then I'm going to take a, a look at the only remaining character, and I'm going to convert it into a byte, and now I have a value there for X, val, and of course I'm going to display it. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here with the Y string. I'm going to take a look at this comma, I'm going to remove the comma, and then I'm going to take a look at the only remaining byte, and then I'm going to convert that into a uh, the, the uh, numeric equivalent and then I'm going to go ahead and display it. So let me load this up and I'll be with you in a second. Okay this is a lot in 15 minutes but here you can see that I'm displaying both the string value and of course the the byte value so that's what happens when you get rid of the star and look at what the actual value of the u is. And I'm actually going to for the last few seconds comment out these couple of lines so we can get cleaner data. Hold on. So you can see I've commented out the two lines that actually give us the X string. And now we're going to look at strictly. Oh, but I didn't load it. Hold on a second. There you go. 
So now you can see that we're getting just the values, and that's plenty of information to be able to do something. I'll see you soon.